Thank you for tuning into Firebase Prime, your source for tips, tricks, and tutorials to make your life in the Fallout 76 wasteland just a little easier. Tune in every Wednesday as we explore new topics and join me for Blast Zone Briefs every Saturday where I'll be doing a deep dive into the ins and outs of a new Blast Zone. Of course, the easiest way to stay updated is to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified about new videos as they're posted. Because Wastelanders is now less than a week out, and with it may bring changes to a majority of the topics that we'd normally cover, this week I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite places on the map to grind XP and legendary enemies. Keep these places in mind if you ever need to get some quick script, or find yourself just shy of the XP needed to reach a new level. Ahead of visiting these locations, remember to prep your character beforehand by consuming any of the food items listed above, and if you're on a team, make sure that the inspirational perk is also equipped. Doing this will ensure that you aren't leaving any free XP on the table, and can make a big difference considering the number of enemies you'll be encountering. But without further delay, let's get into it. For our first location, we'll be traveling to the Burrows. Located under the town of Harper's Ferry, this location served as the town's stormwater management system up until the Great War, after which it briefly became a refuge for any Appalachians looking for a safe place to settle down. This all changed when Marcus, the son of a public works employee, took control of the community, weeding out the weaker settlers and conveniently stocking all of its turrets with live explosive rounds. While you'll have the privilege of experiencing these turrets firsthand, you'll find none of the borough's previous residents in sight. Instead, you'll be encountering one of the map's single largest concentrations of ghouls and a number of robots if you end up venturing into the pump station. You can access the burrows through one of multiple manhole covers found in the streets of Harper's Ferry. While you'll ultimately have access to the entirety of the area regardless of how you enter, my personal preference has always been the southern entrance found near the town's armory. If you end up encountering an error reading inaccessible, available at a later date, when attempting to enter, hopping to a new world will restore your access. In terms of the ghoul population, there are a lot of them and not much distance in between. Because of their higher concentrations, I personally prefer a stealth build for this location as attracting any attention to yourself will quickly result in a large horde coming at you. While my bloodied sniper build was able to pass through without many issues, my bloodied heavy gunner build did not hold up nearly as well. Despite the higher damage output and protocol power armor, there were simply too many ghouls attacking at once to break through. If you happen to be running a heavy gunner build with a vampire's weapon and power armor, however, you should be fine. In a past build, I had no issues with the regenerating health quickly enough to account for incoming damage. Just watch your ammo count as longer reloads can be problematic. Keep an eye out for legendaries while making your way through, as there should be a decent number of them. I've come across 3 star legendaries just standing next to each other on multiple occasions, so on top of the XP gained here, expect to also be carrying out some new items. For our next location, we'll be heading to the Savage Divide to visit the region's West Tech Research Center whose later work on the forced evolutionary virus led to the creation of the super mutants that we all know and love today. This location features the highest concentration of super mutants on the map, even compared to the nearby town of Huntersville, so make sure to come well equipped for both ranged and melee attacks. To get inside the research facility, you'll first need to get through the encampment at the front of the building. I recommend entering from the west and gradually working your way through. Just watch out for the Suicider, who you'll encounter upon conflict at the gate. Further through, watch out for the machine gun turret that can be found sitting in a shopping cart to the right of the short stairs. Once inside the building's lobby, you can enter the research wing if you've already picked up the access holotape, but otherwise you'll need to proceed through the door at the back of the room, which will take you past the security station and to a locker room. If you'd like, you can activate a pair of Protectrons in the security station, but I've never bothered. From the locker room, proceed through the decontamination arches to access the labs for the company's long dormant greenhouse initiative. Upstairs, you'll find the Research Wing's access holotape in the southeastern office, as well as a magazine in a room near the chemistry workbench, if it already hasn't been looted. You can also access the FEV VAT's control room from this floor to gain some additional loot and snipe enemies in the VAT's room below. 
Once done in the labs, you can access the vats room itself by going through the northern door on the first floor of the lab and heading up the ramp. Be careful when entering the vats room as you'll encounter several enemies on the ramp level as well as from below, all of which can land shots on you due to the ramp's grates. Make sure to check out the vats of inert FEV once the room has been cleared, as you can collect toxic goo directly from them, or venture inside for some decent loot if you have an effective way of dealing with blast zone level radiation. A number of different areas can be accessed from the vats room, including the research wing, which you should now be able to access. Here you'll find even more super mutants, as well as a number of horrifying clues about the company's FEV experiments on the unknowing population of nearby Huntersville. Our final location for today's video will take us to the furthest corner of the Cranberry Bog, to the Glass Cavern, located just to the northeast of Fisher Site Prime. Named for the resulting materials created from controlled underground atomic blasts, the Glass Cavern originally served as an experimental site and the Atomic Mining Services initiative to artificially create Ultrasite. After the war, however, the caverns became the first Scorch Beast layer after the Enclave offloaded the experimental creatures onto the site. The resulting exposure to Ultrasite ore furthered their mutations and set a precedent for defending the ore from intruding forces, which we'll use to our advantage while shooting our way through. To access the Glass Cavern, head to the AMS mining facility located just above Fisher Site Prime. Once at the bottom of the pit, enter the caverns through the door marked Do Not Enter. You'll find the door in the fenced-off shallow cave on the southern wall of the pit. As you may have gathered from the intro, you'll be encountering a ton of Scorched at this location. I'll be only one Scorched beast, but a ton of Scorched. You may also encounter an initial wave of robot forces attempting to regain control of the site, and can expect a number of murlocs, including some kings, closer to the main cavern, which sits just below drop site V9. You can actually see the pipe originating from the drop site, which was used by AMS to drop atomic devices into the caverns. Inside the main cavern, you'll also find the location's emboss in the form of a high-level Scorch Beast, which may be legendary and tends to occasionally drop rare items on death, including plans for Ultrasite Power Armor mods. While running through the caverns, mine any Ultrasite veins that you end up coming across even if you don't need them. Mining the material will generate additional waves of Scorched, who will descend on the vein's location to defend the material. Also make sure to loot the bodies of already fallen enemies found across the cavern, as they'll contain a ton of crafting materials and meat. Ultimately, loot everything, including weapons and armor. Even if you become over-encumbered, you'll find multiple workbenches to scrap at upon exiting the caverns to the top side. While this location ultimately offers very little in the way of legendaries, a playthrough will get you a ton of XP and an abundant supply of loot. While not a location, another great way to get some quick XP is by participating in the Distant Thunder event that occasionally triggers within the Cranberry Bog region. To maximize XP, kill all the Scorched yourself instead of opting to let Defiance do the work for you. I particularly recommend doing this event if it spawns at the NAR Repair Yard, as in many cases the event will happen alongside another enemy faction attempting to gain control, so you'll get even more enemies in one location. Oftentimes, these additional enemies will contain legendaries, including the occasional Sheep Squatch. That's it for today's video. I hope these locations help you put the finishing touches on your build ahead of Wastelanders, and I look forward to sharing first impressions of the expansion in next Wednesday's video. Also tune in Saturday for our first Blast Zone Brief, where I'll be doing a deep dive into nuking Harper's Ferry. But until then, for the Enclave.